Welcome everybody to the inaugura inaugural debate for the St. Lucia National Students Council. My name is Blossom Sylvester and I have the honor of being your moderator for tonight. So the candidates here have worked very hard preparing for this debate. Um, so first I would like to give a brief overview of the actual body, the St. Lucia Na National Students Council. And it is an umbrella body for all students councils in St. Lucia. And the council was established as the student branch of the National Youth Council and exists to encourage and facilitate the holistic well-being of, of students in St. Lucia by promoting social inclusion, the arts, sports, mental health, and academics. At present, 16 student councils from public and private schools, secondary schools, and tertiary schools make up the NSC. And of recent, student councils at the primary school level are being established to prepare students for leadership at an early age. So here we have our two candidates, and I'd just like to give them a brief um, introduction. So we have Jaquim George, and he is 18 years of age, and he's from Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. That's the school he attends. And he's a student leader who hails from the southeastern community of Deriso Miku. And he serves um, his community as the second vice president at the Deriso Interim Youth and Sports Council, where he, um, well, while working with the St. Lucian chapter of the Commonwealth Youth Peace Ambassadors Network and the Caribbean Youth Conference Planning Committee. Um, after graduating from the Vfort Comprehensive Secondary School, he moved to the SALCC Division of Technical Education and Management Studies, where he then became Vice President of the National Students Council um, in the 2018 to 2019 Executive. And next, right beside me, we have Zanika Emilien, and she's 18 and also a member of the um, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. And Zanika is a student leader from Babano who also serves in numerous capacities. She is considered as a young environmentalist and climate activist who volunteers with the Caribbean Youth Climate Change Activists and participates in several forums on the environment and sustainable development. She graduated from the Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School in 2018, and after which she joined the Students Council at the SLACC Division of Agriculture and Studies and served in the role of president. She is the outgoing General Secretary of the National Students Council for the 2018 and 2019 Executive. So what I'm going to do now is just go through an overview of today's events. So we'll first have the opening statements and that will be three minutes per candidate. Then I will be asking some questions to these participants, so I hope they're prepared. Um, and then afterwards, we'll actually take it to the audience. So the audience will have a chance to ask the candidates some questions, and then we'll have some closing statements. So now I'm just going to go over some of the rules for today, because we'd like a very clean debate. So no speaker may exceed the allotted amount of time, but may use less if he or she wishes. However, it is within my discretion. Um, there shall be no communication between debaters and members of the audience. There will be no form of misconduct and a candidate can be disqualified by me, the moderator, in the event of this. And any ruling by me, the moderator, on timing and conduct um, of the speakers is final. So everybody got that? Great. So I suppose we can now move ahead with the opening statements from each candidate. So just to remind you, that is three minutes each. So um, who's ready to go first? <laughs> How about I just choose, I choose Zanika because that's the name that's last in my head. <laughs> okay, good afternoon everyone. I would start out by saying that although anyone can go back to change an action, but someone can definitely start from now and make a new ending. And at this critical time, anyone who is willing to dedicate their time to student governance and student advocacy must be willing to change the ambit of a student-led organization. Building on the foundation is very important, but at the stage that the council is, 
we need to increase its relevance and its ability to promote student discipline, development, and most importantly, excellence. This can be done by definitely putting a pl um, plan in action, which will definitely ensure student satisfaction. This is why I'm vying for the position of president, because I understand what needs to be done. As a year two student at the South Africa Community College and the immediate past president of my divisional council and outgoing general secretary of the National Students Council, I can tell you today that I possess the skills and experiences needed for this position. Being a student and a leader at that, I strongly believe in contributing to the student move movement positively and to ensure that the voices of the students island-wide are heard. As a student advocate, I stand strongly for student empowerment and most definitely for student development. Thank you. Wonderful. So now we'll move on to Jackim. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jackim George. I'm from the resource, she said. Um, I should start off by asking myself, why do I, why do I want to become president? Because I think that's one of the most pressing, one of the most how can I put that? One of the most, um, I think that's one of the most, important, the most important questions that I could ask myself. Because who am I? Why should I be the one to be president? What makes me special? So I've been involved in student matters for the past two years. And with my experience in the community and national level, with the JC Friends Sports Council, and with my, um, my, and my portfolio is education, and resource mobilization, and on a national level, as the outgoing vice president, which expects to it on the National Science Council, I believe that I am the only person to take the NSC forward right now. Through my projects, which tackles areas such as advocacy, capacity building, programming, PR and branding, partnerships, and fundraising, I strongly believe that the, and fundraising, sorry. I strongly believe that students have a right to quality education, and I believe that student in involvement in issues that affect us is paramount. Too many times, the voices of students are silenced for no reason whatsoever. People make decisions for us, and, and, and they are working against us. So I believe that through my projects, I am the only person to lead the NSC forward. Thank you very much, candidates. So now we're going to start the question and answer part of the debate. And um, I will start easy with a topic that you're very familiar with, which is education, seeing as y'all both attend this school currently. And this is a National Students Council presidential debate. Um, so recently there's been a lot of talk about um, corporal punishment and the upcoming abolition, well, it's been abolished, as we know. Um, so on Friday, March 1st, 2019, a press release from the Ministry of Education read, the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development has declared its intention to suspend and eventually abolish corporal punishment in schools. The move is in keeping with the many interna international conventions that St. Lucia is signatory to. Then the chief education officer in the Ministry of Education, Rufina Charles, said that while the Education Act has no, has no stated policy for abolition of corporal punishment, it, it did contain structures in the Act that stipulated how corporal punishment should be administered. So Charles added, however, that the department must ensure that the mandates stipulated in the conventions which include protection of child are achieved. So here's the question. Corporal punishment will be abolished as of May 2020. What are your views on the policy regarding the abolition, the abolishment, abolishment, oh my, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the abolishment of corporal punishment in schools and what should um, the NSC's role be given, be given this policy? So let me read that again, sorry. So corporal punishment will be abolished as of May 2020. Mm -hmm. So what are your views on the policy regarding the abolishment of corporal punishment in schools and what should the NSC's role be given this policy decision? So um, who's ready to go first? 
So remember candidates that you have a minute and 15 seconds per question. So shall I choose? Zanika, you look yeah, ready. Sure. Okay. Okay, so as the NSC, as I mentioned in my opening statement, we definitely stand for discipline of students. And at the schools, we need to ensure that, yes, our students respect authority. But if we are going to abolish corporal punishment, as you said, we need to discuss the ways in which the teachers and, well, the teachers would go about using different ways, not like, okay, for instance, if you cannot hit a child, what is the next thing you can do in turn to show that student that what he or she is doing is incorrect? So as the NSC, I think we should sit down with key stakeholders and persons who have um, a say in the abolishment of corporal punishment and discuss the actual alternative paths that we would take instead of corporal punishment. So that's my belief on what on the statement. Okay. Okay, so I totally agree with what Zenica said with uh, as it relates to finding positive ways of find positive ways of disciplining children. However, I strongly disagree. No, I strong how can I so sorry, I'm yeah? sorry. My my take on it is Yes, I believe that corporal punishment should have been abolished, but why wasn't the NSC consulted on that matter? Why didn't we have a seat at the table when it comes to making policies like these? We should have been part of the decision making. It's the, the students are the only person that have been affected. So that's my, my take on that question. Okay. So are there any rebuttals? I don't have. No follow-ups? Okay. Well, I suppose we can move on. So now, um, in the advocacy segment, um, Jackie, I noticed that you mentioned that that is one of the things that you, um, one of your, your platform, one of the things that you stand on in your platform for um, the presidential debate, um, wanting to have more advocacy. Um, so over the years, there have been several cases of bullying among students on and off of the school compound, um, most recent being viral videos of altercations with alleged bullies. So as NSC president, what is your plan to tackle the growing issue of bullying in our school system? First of all, I would like to say that bullying is unacceptable. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be any form of bullying whatsoever. But one of the, on, one of the only way I believe that we can tackle this problem is by tackling the root, which is actually the bullies. If we can find out what is causing the bullies to bully other children, why are they doing it? Is it problems at home? Is it mental issues? Who knows? I believe that we should tackle the root of the problem and we will totally abolish bullying. Well, personally, I definitely do not stand or condone the act of bullying, and I honestly think that it's an act that is very disgraceful. As an organization such as the NSC, I believe that we, we should assure the safety of students, and we need to begin to discuss ways in which we would speak on the, the current situation at hand. Let us begin to rally the students to match against bullying. Let us begin to discuss the ways forward as in ways we would sensitize students as to the effects that bullying has on others and themselves. And let us create forums where we not only engage the students, but also teachers and persons at the school, authoritative staff at the school. And let us begin to address this situation. If we don't speak on bullying and as the NSC, we don't begin to engage the students and engage the public. How do we expect to solve bullying in our schools? Um, so I believe we should begin the process of these discussions, the routes we should take to address bullying. Yes, so as the NSC, I believe that's, that's a great way to start. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Jackie? No. Anything else? <laughs> Okay. Um, 
So, Jackie, you you also mentioned a socio the socio economic effect, um, and that could be a cause of bullying. Um, however, it also speaks to how students perform at school. So, my next question to the both of you, and Zanika can take this first, is. Um, Socioeconomic deprivation seems to be a major factor in students performing at their fullest potential. So how can the NSC assist in curbing the issue and what advice do you have for the government to tackle this situation? Well, um, I brought along some plans that I have for the NSC and I should believe that they were distributed among our audience. Um, one of my key activities within these plans is to use our sustainable development goals. We have goals such as SDG 3 and SDG 4, which speaks to health and well-being and quality education. So if we can center activities around these SDGs, then we'll be able to help these students and we'll be able to finally curb the act, the act of whatever is affecting these students at school in terms of them bullying or being the bully. Okay. Jackie? Can you repeat Would that question? That's no it. problem. Socioeconomic deprivation seems to be a major factor in students performing at their fullest potential. So how can the NSC assist in curbing the issue and what advice do you have for the government to tackle the situation? Okay. So I think, well, it's very, it's very sad to be honest, that students sometimes they probably don't have enough money to go to school or they probably don't have enough money for extra lessons to say. And one of the programs that I will implement in my manifesto, which I brought along with me, which is right there, <laughs> is a tutor to youth program. The way we would, we would go about implementing this program is through, we could re reach out to teachers, former students like myself who would, be, who would like to refresh their memory. And you know, any other educated people that would like to volunteer about three hours of their time per week to help students that don't have the, that don't have the means of getting extra lessons and to sit down, you know, help them, educate them. And if they have any problems at home, we'll, have, we'll also have counselors at hand so that we could probably help curve the issue that they're going with so that you could perform better at school. Okay. Zanika, do you have any rebuttals or anything to add? Well, I believe that if we are going to look at tutors for these students, I believe that they should be well trained. So my question to Mr. Jackim is, do you have a set of persons who are well trained to equip these students with the necessary guidance that they need or will it just be random persons because we cannot just say okay i would just really just choose this person because i believe that they should tutor a student so we really need to look at how and who are we going to use to be able to guide these students and get them the necessary help that they need okay well we would have a criteria for to, for choosing the um tutors of course but it, it would be more most it would, it would most likely be teachers so probably government workers students like us you that would like to refresh their memory so that we could keep the um what we learned in secondary school fresh for future education so yeah that's how i answer your question we would have a criteria where we would look at certain people can i add something? yes you can you have 15 again seconds. i would say that we need to actually look at persons who are fit for the job. We cannot just say, you, we just left secondary school, okay, we think that we are student leaders, hey, we could help any student. It is not really that easy of a situation. So yes, your criteria, I believe, should be amended a bit. 15 seconds, you Can have I anything to something? add? Of course you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I said that we would have a criteria, of course, which means that we would have a certain level for education. Like, let's say you, have, you also have this amount of CXCs, you, you, would, you would be able to choose the subject that you would rather teach, for example. Okay, I left school, I got a one in math, I'd like to give back to the community because I have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah, I would give up three hours of my time per week to help students better themselves, just like me. 
Okay. I got a little heated there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to encourage the, the rebuttals. Okay, let's really delve into what your candidate knows. Um, so we're hearing more and more about schools being shut down or suspended due to infrastructural damage. Um, more recently, um, Andrew Poe Secondary, Bocash Secondary, and Cyrus Simmons Secondary School. So my question is, what role will the St. Lucia National Students Council play in advocating for holistic and conducive environments for students in light of suspension of schools, um, such as the schools I just mentioned, um, because of infrastructural damage? Either one of you can begin. Well, being a student advocate, I would like to believe that you would um, stand for the empowerment of students, not only when something is affecting a student, but also when a positive contribution is being given. So we speak out on matters such as this. Hence the reason why in this unfortunate circumstance that is going on at most of our schools, um, I believe that the St. Lucia National Students Council should really be the first ones to be making a statement. But before we do this, we need to think of a logical process as to how we would go about making a statement. We need to first visit these schools and see the conditions of these schools and what's actually going on. We need to meet with administrative staff to see what the plan is and what the way forward is as to how would we provide a conducive learning environment for our students. And we would see if these plans are put into act and if not, then the NSC is in a great position to make a statement. And we should really start, again, looking at SDGs 3 and 4, quality education and well-being. We can't have students in a learning environment that is not good for their health and that will only not allow them to be productive. So by having the Students' Council make a remarkable statement, I believe that this can help in not only influencing the government to start working, but influencing students to speak out when something is really affecting them. Okay, Jackie? Okay, so what I would like to say about that is that it's first of all, it's really sad that CXC children especially are being left out of school because of poor infrastructure in schools. I believe that it is very disappointing that most that schools have to be shut down. That's the first time I'm ever hearing of schools being shut down because of infrastructure issues. Okay, so how I would tackle this problem? The way I would tackle it is uh, that, okay. Second use, I, I think that most of the second, that the secondary schools that are affected the most are those that probably don't have a student council, that probably the, the, the student council is there but is not active. And one of the programs that I hope to implement is a 12 in 12 program, where I hope to make, where I hope to establish 12 new student councils in 12 months. Okay, so to expand on the 12 in 12 program, I like, um, you know, a minute. 12 in 12 program. Okay, so we will go to the different the, the schools in most need of student councils. We would meet with the administration to see how, how we would help form a student council. And as soon as the student council is set, we would host training workshops for them so that they could be able to advocate on issues like infrastructure, other issues that, they, that may affect them. And also, within that 12 into a program, we would also provide training to all the established student councils around the island so that they could receive the same training that the other student councils do. May. Yes, you may. Yeah. Okay, um, I agree with Mr. George when he speaks on schools lacking students' councils, not being the ones to speak out on issues such as this. But one thing I disagree with is the 12 in 12 program. We have 24 secondary schools on island. So how can you only say that you're going to look at 12 when we have 24? And I believe that all schools should have a functional students council, hence the reason why I would embark on revamping the National Students Governance Day program, which speaks to establishing students councils throughout the island on the same day so each school will have the elections on the same day and follow the same proceedings so at the end of the day the nsc gets to work in a timely manner with all 24 schools on island and even 
now with the primary schools having the councils, we can even bring them onto that program too. So, okay. okay. So, I I I disagree with you completely. Yeah. Just to say that um, the twelve in twelve program it doesn't only say twelve schools. It would it would be it would encompass all the schools. If a school comes to us and says, "Okay, hey." We would like your assistance on how to create a certain council. We, we, we would assist them. But we've been realistic. I don't believe that it is possible to, have to, to go to 24 schools, 24 different elections on the same day. How would, you, how would you work that out? Well, that is the reason why there are many persons on the council. It's we could divide the task. And we also have our parent branch, the National Youth Council, which can facilitate with this activity. And I believe that the National Students Governance Day program is one that will really enable the NSC to be able to host the events and engage all our councils. So yes, the NSDG program is one which will enable us to create the link between our schools and have the needed relationship that we need. Okay, so I think um, we can establish that both of you are for increased um, students' councils. It's just whether we can do 12 or whether we can do 24. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the time we have to do it. But what I want to um, ask as a, a follow-up question to you both is, um, yes, we can have the, the students' councils, but in your experience, because um, I'm not sure how long it's been since you've been on the um, the head body, um, the National Students Council, um, but do you, wh how do you find the effectiveness of being there? And if so, what do you, what changes do you think you can make if y'all do establish these these um, subsidiary subsidiary councils within the schools? How would you empower them? How would you um, ensure that they are effective being in implementing the different things that you would like? Yes, so being at the heart of the NSC as the outgoing general secretary, we really worked on these capacity building workshops which would engage all our councils. And I would like to commend the entire council for this because it really showed the students that they mean more and that their voice needs to be heard. So by hosting these capacity building workshops, I mean if the plan is not one that does not seem as if it would engage the students, why not use it again? So I plan to continue the capacity building workshops, but more frequently on a quarterly basis, not only once a year, as we have one year tenure, but on a quarterly basis so that our students are continuously engaged and that we could build that momentum throughout all our schools. Okay, Jackie? Well, in my talking to program, I do hope to, well, I plan on hosting workshops continuously throughout the year so that the students are working for a task at hand. And what was the other question you asked after? Okay, so my first question was, um, it was a two part. Yeah. So do you, uh, how, how do you find the effectiveness, first of all, of being a member of the, um, the National Students Council? And how would you increase effectiveness um, within, your, within the council and within the subsidiary bodies that you plan to help implement? Okay. So that is the, um, the students' councils within the different schools that, you know, the 12 or the 24. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so another, program that I, another program that I have that would fit perfectly with the question you had is to partner with our parent body, the National Youth Council, to have a, a segment especially only for the students mm -hmm. so that they could have their voice, they could advocate on issues affecting them, and with the training that I would provide in my 12 and 12 program, it would totally fit in brilliantly into that program. Okay. So that they would get the training to advocate and then they would advocate on NYC TV. Okay. I think we have 15 seconds now. If either of you would like to say anything further? No? Okay. So we can move on. Okay, so moving on to the education system and as it relates to developing the child, so our current education system, is it outdated? 
<laughs> so what are your views on the current education system and are there any gaps and does the school curriculum um, sufficiently prepare our students for the world of work? So how can, so this is a, a three-parter, so listen carefully. How can our education system be altered to cater to the existing demands of the world of work? I'd like to answer that question first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that the curriculum, that the curriculum is extremely outdated. It doesn't cater to all students. So I believe that NSC should have a stability when it comes to making decisions like this. We should advocate on a curriculum reform and sit down with the Ministry of Education so that we could, you know, make decisions that will uh, directly affect us instead of waiting for something to happen and then talking about it. I definitely agree with Mr. George as it relates to having a seat at the table and discussing the way forward as to reforming the curriculum because we do have a lot of new innovative minds coming about and I don't think that the current education system really caters to what these students really want to do and it does not really cater, cater to building a holistic student so I really believe that it is high time that we start the discussions as to the reform of the curriculum. Okay. Do you have an, anything specifically, either of you, that you think um, could be valid in adding to our curriculum? Uh. In terms of thinking of the, the modern child, the Gen Z child that's going into the world of work where there are so many more career options available, what do you think that our system is lacking that um, limits them? Well, a lot of students, and yes, they do have a mind of their own right now. So I really think that we should introduce entrepreneurship programs at the secondary school level so that students can really be um, faced, well, not faced, but they can have a chance to see what entrepreneurship is really about. Because we have a lot of them coming about with stuff of their own now they would actually want the world to see so i believe that's one of the key places we need to add to our curriculum okay well being an automotive engineering a second year automotive engineering student myself i believe that the that the, that the curriculum doesn't really cater to students mm -hmm. of the technical field per se i believe that it is more it is more towards the science aspect and the business aspect of a child so I'd, and and engineers are pretty much the most important people that are that that at work right now. They build the houses, they build the cars you drive, they build nearly en everything that you have. They design it, they build it. So I believe that that we should that the um, curriculum should cater to more to the technical children more. To, okay. Is there anything you'd like to add? Okay, moving on. It has been said that the current, now we're moving on to um, behavior in school. Um, back to there. <laughs> so it has been said that the current school suspension policy is more detrimental than beneficial to our students by encouraging deviant behavior from students who are off the school compound. Do you agree with this opinion? And if yes, how can authorities implement more effective disciplinary measures? No problem. It has been said that the current school suspension policy is more detrimental than beneficial to students by encouraging deviant behavior from students who are off the school compound. So do you agree with this opinion? And if yes, how can authorities implement more effective disciplinary measures than suspending a child? Mm -hmm. Well, um, being <laughs> on the NSC for last year, 2018 to 2019, we met with the Youth Empowerment Program. Yep, we had a meeting with them and it really focused on suspension at schools and behavior, behavioral problems. And I think that working with these persons and actually seeing what they have to say, because they really do have good points when it comes to what the statements you just made. So I think that the NSC, the, well, the new NSC should really engage them more and we should sit down and discuss more ways together with them to address the situation. Um, I believe that 
student that wish that okay, I agree that 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 um that the Ministry of Education and the and the school administration should pro probably find better ways of you know teaching a child that okay they do something bad you don't just send them home you probably take them to a counselor take them somewhere that they, that they would that, that they would be engaged in positive acts and not say okay you do something bad go home you don't have to come to school for a certain amount of days or weeks so yeah that's my take on that okay so do you, any of you have because you said you all mentioned discussing a lot but I'm, I'm wondering if what would be your input do either of you have anything specifically that you have I mean because there are so many more ideas being introduced when it comes to um, child behavioral policies so is there anything that you think um, can be implemented as an alternative to these measures such as suspension suspension or as we mentioned before corporal punishment in schools well back to the point that I made I really think that we should look at persons who are trained in the field of um, psychology we yeah. should at least have one person at each school to really encourage and guide these students to see what the problem actually is because although yes these students do have discipline they do lack discipline i would say we need to really think about how we would go about dealing with the problems that they are given at the school is suspension really the way or do these students really need more than just being suspended and sent home without actually knowing what's causing them to behave like this. So I believe that we should really look into having trained and pro professional persons at each school to be able to handle situations like this. Yes. Jackie? Well, I was reading up a couple of days ago, and I think that UNICEF is, a, is a, the right way going forward in tackling suspension, like, pro like punishment on the whole. I think that UNICEF has some great statements on positive ways of, you know, punishing a child. So that when when they when they think of doing something bad again, they'll think of something else, something positive of doing instead of the negative behaviors that they actually do. Okay. Is there any in saying all of this, I really believe that yes, we would say that yes, we would um like I was saying, place the persons at the school, but we need to also develop programs such as after school programs for these students. And when school is closed, still have programs for them so that they are always engaged and they always have positivity around them. So that could probably curve, curb the behavioral patterns that they are portraying at the schools. And anything you'd like to add? I'd just like to say I agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, um, some of your ideas seem quite um, grand, um, definitely useful, um, but a lot of them um, seem to be requiring um, financial backing. So do you have any ideas on how <laughs> you would put that together, put, source the funds or raise the funds for, to implement some of your ideas? Again, being part of the NAC from 2018 to 2019, one of our major issues was fundraising and acquiring money for activities that we had. So one of my main plans is to begin fundraising from the start, start thinking of ways we could generate money for, so that we seem as an independent organization and that we don't only have to go and ask our parent organizations such as NYC or the Ministry of Youth for monetary funds to sort of go with our programs because a lot of these times we see that we need to wait for a response and the affairs of the students we cannot wait mm -hmm. to discuss them and we cannot wait to engage our students so we need to really think of ways that we would raise funds, cake sales, all the usual stuff that groups usually <laughs> do. I mean, they work all the time. So by starting from now, I mean, when we're ready to do a big activity or even a small activity, we'd have enough funds to go ahead with what we have planned. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, me, both me and my, my opponent next to me do have fancy plans, but we, can, we cannot have them without money. 
So, <laughs> another program, another program now I'd like to implement, which is technically free, but it's not free at the same time, is a fundraising drive to raise awareness for something. For example, we could, you know, have a barbecue, a big sale, a car wash to raise awareness for, let's see, cancer, cancer, breast cancer awareness. We would probably have pink cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, donate a percentage of the funds that we make at the car wash or big sale towards the Breast Cancer Awareness Society. Okay. Okay, so on June 3rd, 2019, an article published by the Barbados Today stated, sweeping changes are on the horizon for Barbados's education system, which will likely include the abolition and the controversial, the abolition of the controversial common entrance examination. The introduction of middle schools and a more diverse pool of academic opportunities for the country's children. So at a public meeting, Prime Minister Mia Motley exclaimed, we have to create an education system that makes every school a top school. Every child has a talent and we are discarding too many and we are paying the price with the dislocation at the community level. As a, pot a potential president of St. Lucia's primary student-led organization, what are your views on the current format of the common entrance examination, which grades and places students at schools according to their level of academic prowess or performance? Well, as we have seen, um, seen sorry, most of our students are not on the same level academically. And I would really like to commend the persons who really see to it that they establish a sports academy. Because most of our students, they, like I said, they're not at the same level when it comes to academics. So I believe that we should, yes, we should give the students a chance, a wide range as to what they would want to do such as, yes, the sports academy. If a student, we are seeing the trends that a student is actually great in sports, but at the same time, the academics is wavering a bit. Yes, we could send them to this institution where they would get the proper training that they need, because at the institution, we have seen that they also have classes. They're not solely focused on this, the sports, but they're also focused on academics. So I think we should really look at these things, and I really commend the process that has began as in relocating students when necessary. Okay, check. Okay, first I'd like to say kudos to um, Barbados for, you know, actually taking the, the, the it's, a, it's, it's, it's a risk, but it's a risk worth taking. Mm -hmm. So I believe that coincidence, it's, 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 it's tricky because yes, you are, yes, you have to learn and whatnot, but some of the, some, there are different students there are different minds, there are different ways of people that people think. Yes, I, I can I can go to a doc I can be a doctor, I will I, I can do sciences and whatnot. But there are other people that are into, you know, hands on stuff like automo like vehicles and whatnot. So I believe that that there, there should be other avenues for these students, students like students in the technical field to, you know, enhance their 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 self. Okay. So y'all are both saying that you believe in um, other um, other um, bodies or being established, other um, infrastructure or a, an, a, another school um, to specifically help those students. But for the schools that are already um, established, how would you, um, what would you be your idea to bring them up to the level so that we're all, they're all the top school, because that would be the ideal. So what um, ideas do you have in place for something like that? Well, first of all, um, when we look at our schools, the, we all teach the same um, syllabus and curriculum. Yes, we follow the same. But at the same time, we go at different speeds. So at one school you'd find what is being taught at another is taught in form three whereas in the next school it's taught in form one or a situation similar to to this so i believe to make each school a top because when we look at it students who go to the lower schools as we may say 
there is discrimination there you feel like you're not good enough to be at a high school or a school that's considered to be one of the good schools or the top schools on island so to do this i really believe that we should remove the this is a top school kind of vibe in the education system and really say that okay you're at this school because what is being taught in form one you would be able to grasp it at the form one level but you are at this school because what is being able to what is being taught in form three you won't be able to grasp it at the form one level so then we give the students the idea that you know they're just taking their time to grasp concepts at schools and we're not saying that okay you're too slow to grasp a concept in form one so therefore we send you to a low school so we should really try to discard this um kind of ideas and really see to it that all schools are at the same level in terms of how they are seen to the public. Okay. Okay, so my ideal education system would be schools catered to a certain to a certain aspect of something. For example, okay, I want to go to a doctor, I want to be a doctor, I'll go to nursing school. I would I would want to be a mechanic, I'll go to an automotive school. I'll not go to St. Mary's College then to go and do auto, auto, to go into vehicles. So, well, um, so it, it would totally um, remove that top school business. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now onto the St. Lucia National Students Council, which you're already a member of. What can be done in reflection on your time spent there? What can be done to improve the structure of the St. Lucia National Students Council? Again, I would like to commend our parent body for being the NYC that is for being very practical with us as they tried to um, establish a retreat where we knew what we were supposed we were capable of well what we should be capable of and the structure of the NSC, I believe, is one that should be taken seriously and that the persons who vie for the positions or who are part of the NSC should really know what they're about. And yes, the students, I don't believe that someone should just stand up today and say, okay, I'm going to be on the NSC. You need to show that the characteristics you have will reflect the organization and that the organization does not seem as if we don't know what we're about. So on, I think believe that the new NSC should be a group of young people which would lead the student body in the right direction. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I'd also like to commend the National Youth Council for assisting us in our many struggles that we face <laughs> as the National Students Council for the past, for our past tenure. I think structurally, I don't think we have enough time. I believe that the now the um, NSC should be moved to probably I don't think two years two years would be too much but probably about eighteen months so that we could make sure we implement all the projects that we hope to implement. Okay. Again, I would like to add, if you're going into an organize an organization like this, you shouldn't be discussing what you will do when you get into the organizations. There are supposed to be set plans as to what the organization will be about. So the extension is not really necessary, but we just need, we just need strong minds to know how to lead this student organization. Do you have anything to, as a rebuttal to that? Thank you. Um, I think yeah, we need to have plans, but we need to have the time for the plans. We cannot just have, we cannot have dispensary edges, and then when, when it comes to that, we're saying, oh, this needs to be planned more, this can be executed that way, so we have to give it a bit more time. Sometimes things get pushed back, so they get pushed back to a sense that we don't even have time to even complete them. So I believe that the 18, 18, about 18 months should be right in the sweet spot when it comes to, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, um, executing all the plans that are set for the tenure. Okay. So in keeping with your tenure, um, your projected tenure, uh, what do you think is your biggest weakness as a leader and how will you maneuver your presidency with this in mind? Okay, so I would say 
that my biggest weakness, of course, is not like he said, we do not have enough time to plan. Therefore, my biggest weakness is that I do not plan enough. So I believe that going forward and learning that that's one of the flaws that I need to improve as a, a president. Oh. Mr. Charles. <laughs> Are we totally honest? George, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we totally honest my, with you? My apologies. My <laughs> biggest witness is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and I hope that over the next 10 years that I improve my public speaking abilities, my ability to speak out on issues affecting me, because I believe that I have the ideas, I have the plan moving forward, is put it into words <laughs> is the biggest <laughs> problem that I have. Okay. Um, so this one's a little bit left field, but to lighten the mood, what is one positive trait in your opposing candidate which you admire? <laughs> and, <laughs> and how can it be engaged to lend to your presidency should you be elected as the next president of the National Students Council? <laughs> um, I think Zenika is a, a really strong will person, somebody who would, how can I put that? She's, <laughs> she, when, when something has to get done, Zenika would be the one to say, okay, it, will, it, it has to be done, so she would give us, you know, a little nudge. We say yes, that has to be done. We have to do this. Should she's the person, the kind of person to give reminders, saying okay, this has to be done, whatever, and what and so and whatnot. So yeah, that's your most well. Jackie has the well, yeah, he has the tendencies to make you smile when you're most upset. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's something that I am I admire about him because like he said a lot of the times I really go at them when I need to see that something is done and I need to see that the Senate National Students Council is at the level that it's supposed to be so when he comes in and he's able to make me smile then I feel lighter as to going forward mm, okay and I think on the flip side I'd like to ask what do you think is your personal strength and how it applies to your leadership. Well, and, uh, yeah. as Mr. George said, I'm someone who does not sit around and does not sit with that nothing is done. I will be on the backs of persons. I will say that, hey, this has to be done and it will be done. Not only that it has to be done and okay, we're sitting around to see if it will be done, but I see to it that it is done at the moment. So that's something that I really think that a president, a real president, should have as a characteristic trait. Okay. Can I give two? <laughs> By all means, yes. Um, like Zenika said, I have the ability to make people smile. I think that's a really good, <laughs> I think that's a really good thing about me. I'm very positive, I'm very tenacious. I, I think that with, my, with the mind that I have to think outside of the box, I do that. I can, you know, think, make different, think, some, think of something different, think of something that can, you know, change some, somebody in that kind of way. So yeah, I agree that my best two traits are my ability to make people smile and the way that I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll ask one final question. I think we might have time for one last one, because uh, this one's quite interesting to me. So St. Lucia has been heavily reliant on tourism, as you both know. And we spoke a bit about alternative career paths and establishing um, programs within schools that can um, help um, students who do seek al these alternative paths. Um, so with that in mind, what is your view, um, what is your opinion on, tour on us being so heavily reliant on the tourism industry? for economic activity um, and if you are of a view opposing that what would be um, what would be your, your answer to that in terms of um, 
us seek in another direction? Well, as a small developing island state and seeing that we solely de um, depend on tourism, I believe that that is a risky move. And as someone who has gone into agriculture, I do see a lot of bright plans and a bright future for St. Lucia in different aspects, not only agriculture or tourism, but such as Mr. Jakim Joji studying mechanics at the... Totally different genetic. Yes, this. <laughs> 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 and, Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> and we could really enhance the abilities of students like this. I mean, when you so your island solely depends on tourism, what happens to persons like me or him who is studying something totally different? Where is the place in that for us? So I really think that we should begin looking at alternative ways to build our economy, not only for tourism, but for the many industries and aspects that are there to create a brighter future for St. Lucia. Okay, Jackie. Okay, so my view on, on that question is that I think tourism is very up and down. It's not a stable source of income for the country. And I think that avenues such as, such as agriculture, avenues such as sports, especially sports, because we have so many bright young talents here and they don't have an avenue for them to, to showcase their talent. They usually have to go overseas or they just die out because they, they have no other means of portraying their immense talent. So I believe that sports, agriculture, technology, these are the ways moving forward when it comes to building revenue. And just adding a little bit to what Mr. George said, if we really continue to depend on tourism, then we would encourage brain drain and really run out young people who decide to study something different or really looks into doing something different apart from tourism. So I really think that we should rethink the position that we are taking in St. Lucia and look at ways to incorporate and engage everyone. Okay. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I agree with what she had. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so now we're going to take it to our audience. I hope you've um, been listening to this spirited debate. Um, if you have any questions on any of the segments, you can now ask. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am Alex Plant, and I am the outgoing public relations officer for the St. Lucia National Students Council. Um, I have a question to Nem and to both of you. Two questions. Um, my first question to Nem. In your introduction, you said that your portfolio, part being on the Deriso Youth and Sports Council, is that um, of resource mobilization. So if elected president, how can you put the skills from this council into play on the NSC? And to both of you, you both said that you have been on your um, divisional councils at South Lewis Community College. So one, what has been your contributions to the, your divisional council? And if elected president, do you think that those contributions would be effective on the council to the benefit of students nationally. Thank you. Okay. So that was a two part. So the first one was directed to. to, to and okay. Uh, okay, so I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to answer your first question by saying that I've been working with the youth worker for the Deriso Youth Sports Council to mobilize all the clubs so that they could, you know, Build, have structure in their organization so that, so that moving forward that they, have, that they have, are more able to plan for different activities that they may have. So I hope that through my learning from that experience, I'll put that into my, for example, my 12 in 12 program with mobilizing the councils. And my other, the other question, I wasn't actually on my Division of Students Council. <laughs> okay, well, I will answer the question that I'm sorry. he posed. Um, 
when I first entered the Safa Community College at my division, I realized that the council was sort of dormant and I came from a council at the Leon Hiss. So I was still in that spirit to join another council and to be the voice of the students. And when I realized that this was happening to my division, I took it upon myself to see that my divisional council was engaged in activities, was engaged with other councils at the school, and I really saw to it that the Dagri Divisional Council was on the map at Safa Lewis Community College. And I can proudly say that I achieved that and that the new council that is in store will have a bright future. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Good yeah, afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. Both candidates said that they would change the perception of of top of top of top schools in the island. And my question is that how do you go on doing that? <laughs> so who would like to take that? Okay. I think that it is a very difficult task for us to do as a, as a council for this year. So I hope that I could build a platform so that probably in the next five years, I would say five, just to give her a, a bit extra time to go after me. <laughs> I <laughs> so totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> so that they could implement that, that, so that they could build on the foundation that I built when I was here. So that they could, you know, establish that. It's not only, you don't always have to go to convent or college for you to be a top in society. I totally agree with what Mr. George had to say on this. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we have another question from the audience. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to first commend the two candidates for taking up the opportunity to serve the organization, the National Students Council. Uh, my question is, um, basically, I think you have a long year ahead. Uh, what are three of your core activities that you think will define your next year in office? Well, when I started, I mentioned that the main thing for me was the National Students Governance Day program. And, and that has been one of my key aims for the National Students Council, because without our branches, which are the students councils at the different schools, we wouldn't be able to be the National Students Council in our full capacity because we'd be lacking the um, engagement of our students throughout the island. So that is one, and I would really love to encourage school visits so that we build the interaction between the National Students Council, and not only the student body, but also the teachers at the school, which would really build a relationship so that they, that could build trust also with the schools so that they can rely on the National Students Council when needed. Also, my third point is the Sustainable Devel Development Goals Program. If we look at these SDGs, we could see that a lot of them could be incorporated into the student movement and students could really come out and speak on all 17 of these goals and we could really generate activities and generate discussions from these 17 sustainable development goals. So these are the three main goals for me as a candidate for president for the NSC. Um, one of, I, would, I would say the, the program that I'm most excited to implement was a program that was not even my idea. It was a, it's the Lucian Leader Summit, which is a five-day training workshop which brings student leaders from across the island to one setting to discuss matters affecting us and to find solutions to these, to these problems weeks and months after the compass ended. Another, um, another program that I would like to implement is as on the, national, um, on the um, Caribbean Youth Conference Planning Committee, I'm the um, student outreach coordinator. So one of the programs I'd like to implement is a student leaders webinar series, which which would encompass all, which which would encompass students from across the Caribbean to meet up in, in a 
forums such as Webex or what's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> you can't ask Webex your opponent. Yes, yeah, Zoom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Zoom. The name completely sit me. <laughs> Webex or Zoom, and we we would you know since um Caribbean since Caribbean the Caribbean mirror the same they have the same problems that we have. We would discuss solutions to each of our problems. We'll get a second opinion on them so that we could help each other as a Caribbean. Uh, now, another program that I'm excited about is the 12 in 12 program, which I mentioned so much today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I believe it is of inclusion in the, of the NSC in, in schools is, is very important to me because I believe that we, one of the downfalls of our past executive was that we weren't out there enough. So I believe that going out there, reaching out to the schools would be really exciting for me. Okay. So do we have a yes or no question? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi. You are both going up as a student advocate. What do you think is the most pressing issue that our students face? And as president, how do you plan to engage your newly elected executive in curbing that issue? to go first. <laughs> well, for me, I have a soft spot for persons with disabilities. So I believe that as a student advocate, I should and will advocate for persons with disabilities, partner with the Council for Persons of and for the, <laughs> the Council of and for oh, Persons of Disabilities to advocate for issues, find solutions that we could bring Thing, I bring ways to help students, persons with disabilities at secondary schools right now because they attend the same schools that we do, but they, pro I want to. <laughs> we could probably, you know, have rooms for persons who are disabled. Persons who, can, who are unable to walk. Yeah. Persons, with, persons, who are, persons who have wheelchairs, I should say. Yes. So that they could you know, move or get around the school easily. You should have grill so that persons who, can, who cannot read can, you know, go to a library and read a book. Also, audio books at libraries so that persons who are visually impaired can go to a book, who can go to a library, sit down and read a book. Well, for me, I have seen two trending issues that students are being faced with, which is what we spoke about, infrastructural damage, and what Mr. Jackim touched on, which is discrimination and I will add bullying. That has been two of the pressing issues that we are seeing now. So with infrastructural damage, without students being in a classroom, we wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to learn or wouldn't be able to function properly. So I believe that we should, well, under my presidency, for the National <laughs> Students Council. <Hopefully. laughs> um, we should really have a seat at the table with education stakeholders and really discuss how we would ensure that all our schools are functional and that the buildings that the students are sitting in and learning in are conducive for them. And secondly, I would totally agree with all what Mr. Jackim said about discrimination um, against disabled people and speaking on partnering with the group which is headed by Mr. Mufilas James at the moment. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Bennett Charles, retired student. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just two quick comments. Uh, I love the fact that Zenika mentioned about financing. However, I think as moving forward, you need to think way beyond that. I think too often you rely on kick sales and, and those things. As an organization, as the National Students Council, you need to explore what are the current funding that exists at the very schools. You know, do the students pay a student council fee and where does that money go to? I can recall way back, actually, the South Louis actually bought a Jeep on the students council money. That was way back then. <laughs> So there is potential within the very schools to fund. I don't know where the central executive gets its money from. Is it, do you get collect from the pool of all the schools that have operating students councils? 
you know what is that like and also i definitely think that as an nsc you need to add you need to ensure that you lobby nyc to ensure that the subvention is increased that part of that subvention goes to the national students council so that that is because they're lobbying for their part yes. <laughs> the, the next comment i had is i noticed you speak a lot about the various schools and the way they were Castro is comprehensive, Vifort comprehensive, Leon is comprehensive, or reflected one would comprehensive. They were the ideal schools collectively, both for technical and academic students. However, what has happened, sadly, we were not able to maintain those structures. And I'm worried about, I know that you support the, the Sports Academy. I'm worried about the continuation and the, 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 the maintenance of those structures. That is always the issue. So I think we already had the model, but we chose not to follow that model of comprehensive schools, which provided technical. Right now, TVET is actually looking at how do you streamline education within the Caribbean system. But I certainly think that at the end of the day, you need to move away from the kick sale vibes. <laughs> you need to seriously look at financing. The NSC should not be operating. Your financing should not be looking at what is locally. Partner with larger organizations, both regional, internationally, and locally, to fund your programs, I think would go a long way in helping you. But I, if I was a student, I would certainly look forward to the day of elections. But I wish the two of you all the best. Thank you. Thank I think you. this Thank gentleman. Good evening. As both of you have been on the outgoing executive of the NSC, what would you say was the biggest mistake or Achilles heel of the, of the tenure? And what would you do differently to avoid or solve this issue? A part two to this question <laughs> is what <laughs> would you say was your greatest contribution to that, say, to that said tenure of the NSC or student development on a whole? Um, I believe that our biggest Achilles heel as a student council, as, as being on the outgoing executive, is we had the ideas, is putting it into reality was our biggest problem. So I believe that setting a proper timeline for things to happen and, you know, rep reprimands for if these deadlines pass and whatnot, I think that would somehow curve the issue that we had before. And what was the second part? What was your greatest contribution? Oh, to my greatest contribution was I was having a, a big say in, I won't say a big say, but because all of us <laughs> contributed, but <laughs> the idea of the um, workshops, I think me and Zenica, <laughs> we, I think we worked well in, you know, planning that and yeah. <laughs> So for me, um, one of our biggest flaws was that we procrastinated a lot with <laughs> our activities. And I would really think that the new NSC would get with the program and get with what we actually have to do and not really stay and say wh whether or not we should push this event back or we should just get with it and do it. Um, like Mr. George said, we did the capacity building workshops and I think that was a collaborative effort by all members and I wouldn't say that I one of my biggest contributions because indeed I worked with all my members and we saw to it that whatever we planned that it was done effectively so I would say that all of the events that were done by the NSC I would say that not only me but the entire council had a part to play in it. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I listened to one of your questions on structure, and what I realized is that both persons who are seated here attend the South Louis Community College, and when we look at the roster for all the candidates, most of these people or candidates are also from the South Louis Community College. And I reflect to earlier in the debate when you guys spoke about the inclusion of primary school students, yet the primary school students will not be voting at the NSC General Assembly. So if we're trying to build more um, councils within the primary schools, where exactly does the primary school students or the primary school councils fit into the model of the NSC? Okay, so <laughs> I think that, that primary school student councils, I, they pro they're going to be there when we leave. So I believe that it is really important that we, that we 
introduce more student councilness, I should say, <laughs> into the um, primary schools, and you know, probably have one as a floor rep or one on or on one of the committees that cause, because they face the same issues that we face too. If they don't get the practice to advocate now, when they when they get where we are, that's when it's not that's not when they get a chance to you know have the proper training, have the experience. So that's my take on primary schools in student mm -hmm. councils. Well, Mr. Alfred stated that the primary schools wouldn't be able to vote at the upcoming general elections, and that's because of the way that our constitution is set up. So I believe that the upcoming NSC or the new NSC should really sit and reform the constitution that we currently have so that all our bodies, all our students are allowed to have a voice and a seat at the table when it comes to electing the new students, National Students Council body. Okay. <laughs> I think we have time for a couple more questions. Good afternoon or evening. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, um, being, before I was involved with the National Students Council, I always felt like what you guys were saying that there are not really a lot of opportunities for students. But after being involved, I found out that there are opportunities. I mean, there's always more. You can always be more. But how do, we, how do you plan as the new NSC to go about disseminating that information to the students to ensure that it's not always the same set of people being involved in activities and that all students have a fair chance, a fair opportunity to be engaged? Well, with all the students councils that would be established on island we could really use this channel to get the information out and that it's not always kept within the same circle because one of the key responsibilities of the nsc branches which is which are the students council students councils at the school sorry is to really relay the information that the nsc has to the entire student body so if we really engage our councils and help them to understand their true responsibility, then all these opportunities would be able to filter out throughout all the schools on island and that everyone would be engaged and everyone would be able to have an opportunity. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up, Miss Polius. <laughs> I have, a, I have a, uh, a program strictly to that issue itself, which is the I Am NSC campaign. It was hosted a, a couple years ago by the NYC, that, uh, by the last NYC, and I think it, it worked really well with, you know, building awareness for the, for the National Youth Council, being the importance, and, you know, just spreading, you will say what they are, what they're about, what do they do, and any way that, that the normal youth can get into these, can tap into these resources. I again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this will be our final question. Before you all said that um, you have a lot of workshops, workshops, workshops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> workshops. But I'm just saying, like, how would you improve the experience of a person going to a, a workshop to actually in implement that into the schools and other areas of their areas? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that I necessarily said only workshop, workshop, <laughs> workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think one thing you would look forward to is the Russian Nuda Summit because I went to it last year and it was a, a, an amazing experience for me. I had so much fun. I made, I built so many bonds with students from around the Cari students from around the island, I should say. And I believe that that's something you should look forward to if I get elected. Well. I would totally agree with Mr. George on the LLS movement. It's truly a good one. Kudos to Mr. LeBon for being <laughs> with this movement. But um, as you speak to the workshops, we need to look at how these students can relate to whatever is being said at these workshops and how they would re be able to transfer that into their school lives. So I think going forward, we shouldn't be having workshops where students would be sitting clueless as to what they would do after the workshops, but really ensure that their engagement is there and that they understand what's really going on. Okay. So I think that brings our 
question portion to a close. So, well, just one more? Okay, well, we can squeeze in one more, but quickly. <laughs> Good evening. Um, this question is projected to the both of you. And I do understand your push for the implementation of an American model education system, which would be the technical and education subjects. However, we are under a British model system, and we do know that this system is adequately preparing students to sustain themselves, which is the system that we are under, this economy. So I'm wondering why is this the push, and how are you guys able to implement this, knowing that this is the British system that we're under, and that is a very difficult move to execute. Thank you. Well, I don't recall saying that I'm willing to push for the American system as it relates to education, but um, we really need to see to it that all students are catered for, and that's what I think both me and Mr. George were trying to say, that the academics is not what all students are really into. Well, I shouldn't say into, but all students are not at the same level when it comes to academics. So what we're trying to say is that we should incorporate other areas whereby all students are catered to, not moving away from being able to allow students after they um, go in for their education that they could sustain themselves, but they, that they would be able to do whatever they want to do. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with what Zenica said. I think we, as the NSC, are for the students and we look for the betterment of the students. So I, so I think that the students should be able to, you know, choose something that, okay, I want to go to this, uh, but not get discriminated for it. That's what I was really trying to push and not change a whole education system. <laughs> I, was mo I was trying to say that, that students should be, that, sh that the curriculum should be inclusive of all students and not just education, because it's uh, the, um, <laughs> the, students, the, um, the education system right now is, it's all about regurgitation, studying for an exam. That's what I was trying to say. Like, it shouldn't only be exam format. Okay, say for exam, then the next day we completely forget everything you wrote. So that's, a, that's what I was trying to push for. Okay, quickly. Now we'll have um, our closing statements from each candidate. So you can breathe a sigh of relief now. No more <laughs> questions will be <laughs> we asked your way. Uh, who would like to begin? <laughs> I think you'd like to go for Zenica. <laughs> <laughs> well, in closing, first of all, I would like to commend the Electoral Committee for putting together this event. This really allowed the public and most importantly, our stu students island-wide to hear the plans which are in store for them. I must add that leadership is not just a position, but it comes with continuous action. And I can assure you that under my presidency of the St. Lucia National Students Council, this organization will never be seen as an inactive organization and that the students will be engaged continuously. And with the plans that I have set, I can assure you that all students will have a seat at the table. And I can guarantee everyone here today that this organization will definitely be in good hands if it's handed over to me, that is. <laughs> <laughs> and I will encourage all students to make the right decision when voting on the 18th of November, which is Monday. And that right decision is to vote for me, Zanika Emilie, <laughs> for the president of the St. Lucia National Students Council. So thank you for everyone for turning out. It was really a pleasure to sit here and let you know my plans for the upcoming NSC. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank the Electoral Committee for hosting this wonderful debate. <laughs> I'd like to thank the, um, the guests which turned out, the lovely questions, difficult questions that were given to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the, um, the moderator for ensuring that, deba that the debate went smoothly. I would, I would go about, I would, okay. I'd like to close by mentioning some of my projects that I hope to Im implement. <laughs> One of them would, I think I didn't really explain upon the, um, the Tutor to Youth program. 
I think that is a very, in, uh, a very pressing problem that we have in society right now. Um, I, I like to, you know, see. Sorry, I really know what's right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, you know, <sighs> I'd just like to, you know, I might not be the best talker, I'll say that, but I believe that my plans would would be the, the, the my, my plans and, you know, my way of thinking, my, my, the partnership that I built over the past years would would really push the NSC forward to where it should have been and where it was before. And I believe that you should vote for me on the 18th of November, 2018. Come out all CN councils. 2019. <laughs> Come out all CN councils. Send your names in to the um to the um to the electoral committee to us and just come out and vote for me. Put Jack in for pro pro progress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to thank everybody again. I think everybody's been sufficiently thanked, though. But um, I would like to thank again for coming out. Um, those watching from home, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and to our candidates, we, I think we all wish you the best of luck. Um, you all brought up some very um, pertinent points. We can see that you guys are very in invested in the future of the, um, the council. And I'm sure that either of you would be a good, uh, a good choice. Um, but I'd like to wish you guys the best of luck in the upcoming elections. Thank, Thank you. you. So, yes. <laughs> I, think, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>